Clark. I'm the CEO of Fury Gold. And I recently joined the company about a month ago. And I wanted to share with you what I think is an exciting story. It's, uh, it, as, as Gilbert mentioned, we are a Canadian-based uh, project-oriented exploration company. And uh, effectively, I just wanted to quickly share with you this, our slideshow here. And uh, first off, we, as you know, we have to go through the disclaimers. Look, uh, essentially, um, I joined the company about a month ago, and uh, I was excited to come over here effectively because I saw a great opportunity. I joined the company six months ago on the board. Uh, my background is, is over 23 years in the capital markets industry, where I predominantly work for mining companies just like this. Uh, my skill set was really to try and, uh, you know, convey the message, tailor the strategy, think about financial capital markets, how these companies would best work. And um, as I got into the board, I realized that there was a, a lot we can do with this company. What first intrigued me was really uh, the leadership and the board member, the technical skill set. Uh, when you spend a lot of time sitting with companies and investors over the years, uh, it's really apparent how important it is to be a leader and have a great culture. It really translates into the process and the decision-making skills and basically aligning yourself where the market's going and where investors want uh, to find. And uh, I was really impressed uh, with the company right away. And then when you back into the fact that we not only had uh, one good project, we had four. There's really two core projects with Committee Bay and Eclair. And uh, as we jumped into the, to the assets, um, it gives us a lot of optionality going forward. And uh, if you can see by the slide here, we were in Nuneman up, up uh, with Committee Bay and Eclair is sort of our flagship in Quebec. We've got Homestake Ridge out in British Columbia. And then we have the Eleanor South Joint Venture with, with Newmont and Azimut in Quebec. And, you know, it's, it's uh, one of these things where in the market, as the market was transitioning over the summer, um, we were uh, focused on trying to drill three, three projects out. And it's not really what these companies are really looking for. It's essentially, or investors are looking for, they want, to, want you to basically put your best money in the ground. And uh, uh, at the same time, they don't want to see a company looking to raise three to $400 million to be a development company. And that's kind of where we were heading. And as we got through the summer, um, it became apparent to me that we should be going to where we're focused, which is basically an exploration company. Um, with that in mind, we, you want to be great at what you're good at. We've got Mike uh, Hendrickson, who's effectively one of the best geologists I've come across in the industry. He's got relationships back from his days at Newmont uh, globally. And this is where we want to do, want to focus is basically putting the money in his hands. So uh, as part of an exploration strategy, uh, you're not looking to build out a mine, you're looking to broaden it and, and drill into these projects and effectively shore up the ounces uh, going forward. And you want to focus in where your, your biggest bang for the buck is. Um, just to start here, this is Eclair, which is, which is our flagship again in Quebec. Uh, what you should take out of the slide here is effectively, it's a prolific area to mine for gold. It's relatively unexplored and it's up near the James Bay Hydro Project, which effectively produces um, energy for most of the Quebec and, and much of the U.S. Northeast. It's got uh, a huge layout of roads and infrastructure with power. This makes buying a, something like this much more economical for a major there's room for expansion. And again, the infrastructure is, is really important. As we dig down into the mine itself, when we came here, they had drilled into Eclair, Snake Lake. This is the Eastman uh, resources. They had poked into Percival. Uh, we did a geological study with Kim Cook, who's worked with Newmont and Barrick. She's one of the top geologists in the world or geophysicists in the world. And what she came back with was, was not just three sites, but nine. Um, this, this gives us a huge opportunity for exploration. Uh, it's a 30 kilometer discovery along the Canard Deformation Corridor. This is only half our property in Quebec. 
And again, this slide should really give you the size and scope that, that there is a lot more to discover here. And this is what the majors are looking for in terms of a development project. Uh, digging into the company a little bit on the Claire, uh, we have up in the le top left hand sort of a cartoon of 1.3 million ounces of resource uh, projected on surface. That's the crux of the Eclair mine. But again, uh, in this sort of cartoon version, we've sort of laid out how you have Snake Lake structure and the Eclair structure that run parallel together across the top. What was interesting is we discovered a newly identified structure that lay in between. It was unexpected. And these are the kind of things that we're hoping to find and develop. Uh, you can see on the Western extension, uh, there are, are several areas with, the, with a fold hinge target uh, up to the north and then the limb target. And then we also have the Eastern extension. These are all areas that we're drilling into and where we think are gonna add value to, to the project. This is a surface view or vertical view of the Claire project. Uh, it's my favorite slide. It gives you kind of a sense of where the gold is, where the resource is. Um, you can also look and see where our pending drill holes are on the limb target, as well as over the Snake Lake. Uh, again, our goal here is if you, if you look at sort of the top uh, um, sort of drill holes, we did go close to resource and we found 11 and a half grams over six meters and 23 grams over seven meters. It's the gold is there, but we're not getting paid to really drill into the resource. That's kind of what you do as a development company. What we were paid to do is expand the project and make it more viable from a larger perspective. And that's why we're doing these other drills. What's interesting on the Snake Lake side is uh, we, they did find gold, Eastman found gold on surface. We drilled a little bit down, we shored that up. And then we took actually a, a pretty deep dive of a kilometer uh, down and we came up with 94 grams over half a meter. Uh, what this meant was that there, there was likely a lot more gold in between the one kilometer and the surface. Again, uh, I'll give you in the next slide and you can kind of take a closer look at that and see the potential. So this is the slide uh, with a kilo one kilometer down dip. And uh, again, the message from this slide is that there's a lot of open space. This is in its, in its infancy. Uh, this could double the size of the Claire project. Uh, again, um, it takes time to drill these out and we're, we're pending five holes coming out in the next few weeks and we're excited to see what's coming. As we go further to the east, uh, about 11 kilometers, there's our, our Percival fold hinge. Uh, and that's that that was looked at uh, by East Main. It was a very uh, prolific discovery when they first found it. They had been walking across the surface and picked up some rocks and found seven grams of gold, put a drill right behind it, and voila, they had a new mine. The interesting part is they stopped too early. They were taking some lateral drills and not finding anything, so they stopped drilling. We came through, we put a, a magnetics across the top of this. And we discovered that actually the mine went down plunge into an extension. And then we took a look of 500 meters over to the east and we see another untested parallel fold hinge that looks exactly like the one they first found. So this is, this is probably one of our more prominent targets heading into 2022. Uh, we're looking to put a drill hole here early in the first uh, uh, quarter. And again, if we find something here, it gives us a lot more credibility to the other six untested areas in the, in the region. And uh, again, this, this, this uh, project has size and scope, and uh, that's what we're looking for. Uh, further to the north, um, as I mentioned earlier, we have the Eleanor South JV. It's uh, an in interesting project. We work with Newmont. Um, they have 28%, we have 28%, and Azimut has 24%. The difference here is that we are the operator, which is a, a position of strength. Uh, we get to decide what we're gonna go after and when. Uh, it's an important position to have, has a lot of value. Uh, as you look at the map here, you can see Newmont to the northwest, and you can see the Chichu deposit to the northeast. What I would say is this is this is an area that's going to be interesting. It's, it's an area that should be consolidated on ownership. 
Uh, I think it's something for you to watch because again, it'll add value. The Chichu deposit itself is uh, with Sirios. They have 2 million ounces at 0.65 grams. It's low grade, but it's an important bonus for Newmont as an example that they can put into their mill. Uh, as for the target itself that you see in the middle, there's a five and a half kilometer target that we think is uh, really interesting. It's a ge geochemical anomaly. Uh, we've sat down with Newmont. We both want to drill it. I, we think it, the, this is what we're supposed to do here in terms of adding value. And again, it's, it's, a, it's a, an interesting project to watch and I would keep that on your radar. As we jump uh, back to Committee Bay, this is the project up in Nunavut. Uh, it's a 300 kilometer uh, zone that we've targeted. It's exciting because there's 270,000 hectares. This is one of these projects that really doesn't belong in a junior portfolio. This is where the big boys go. This is uh, where the majors are gonna look. It's an elephant hunting up here. Uh, effectively, you know, if we have a discovery here, it could be extremely meaningful to the stock price. And as we look in here, we've got um, over on three bluffs. We've got 1.3 million ounces there, but we know it needs to go higher to 5 million at seven grams. So even though we think it, it, it will build out to two and a half million ounces as we do an extension down, we've moved over to Raven and put four holes in there. But as you can see by the slide, there's still a lot of targets and we're just at the tip of the iceberg. But again, a, a enormous land package and a lot of potential. This is the Raven that I just mentioned. Um, it's an eight kilometer shear zone corridor. There's a 1.2 kilometer mineral, mineralized footprint. Uh, it goes down one kilometer. Uh, there has been historic drilling here. The uh, North Country uh, resource company put in seven drills. They they missed on uh, on uh, four, but hit on three. And as we came in to take a second look at this 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 project, we tried to figure out what was it they were doing and why did they miss and what potential it might have. But again, you can see the size and the scope as as there are discoveries here. It's it, it's a big land package and a lot of room to move. Again, uh, just to drill down into the actual drilling results of what they had, you can see in the bottom left-hand corner of this slide that they were drilling historically up near service, service, surface and uh, effectively drilling in parallel to the mineralized zone. We looked at the geology and, and uh, figured that the geometry of, of the angle of attack was different. Uh, we changed our tactics. We came in it from a different place. We hit four for four on our drills. Uh, the interesting part here is we had visible gold on three and we, we, we hit arsenopyrite on four of them. Generally speaking, this is the experience here is that you have a one for one relationship with arsenopyrite and gold. And we came across 20 to 30 meters. Uh, we've got it coming out of our labs. It's gonna come out starting next week. Uh, again, if this is something that we get good results on, it could be extremely meaning meaningful because we have an eight kilometer shear zone. Uh, we've done some surface work. We know there's more arsenopyrite and visible gold on surface. And, and uh, this is something that we're pretty excited about. That kind of brings us to the end of, uh, of, the, of the slides on, on those three targets. Uh, I did want to mention Homestake. We have put that up for sale. Uh, we think there's a lot of potential there, but as I said before, a junior company, it's, it's equally important to monetize some of the assets uh, from a financial point of view and put the money where it's most productive. We have 118 million shares outstanding. The stock has traded off quite a bit since the beginning of the summer, but that's again, why I think it's worth looking at. We're trading at $20 an ounce, which is a, an incredible valuation. Uh, we did do a, a private placement last night and raised $5 million to shore up the treasury. Um, it's a first hurdle and what I think is a great pathway ahead for us. Uh, again, uh, we're looking to sell home stake. We're most likely going to see some cash up, for up front and, and participate in the upside with stock from the company who buys it. And uh, again, it's about focusing our finances putting money in the ground uh, as a development company, 
Uh, it's harder to do that as an exploration company. It's essential. It's, it's not actually that complicated. You want to give your geologists as much room to work with. Uh, one of the things I think going forward here is that you're going to also get 20, 20 drill holes coming back to us from the assay labs in the next uh, week to six weeks. I think that's a huge potential upside there. And if we shore up the end of the fall with the sale of Homestake, our treasury is going to look that much better and give us a lot more of a optionality going to next year in terms of strategy and focus. Uh, again, the flagship uh, asset is Eclair. There's a ton of room to work with. Uh, Committee Bay is something that uh, has a huge potential upside for wind. And then there's a lot of value to be had, not only in drilling, but also navigating consolidation on the Eleanor South JV. And at this point in time, with the way the economy is in terms of gold price, I think it's a really interesting time to be looking at a stock that's clearly undervalued. There's great leadership here. And uh, again, there's a great pathway going forward. So something I think worth looking at. And uh, Gilbert, that pretty much brings me to the end of my presentation. Uh, if you have uh, something that uh, questions, I'm happy to answer them. A couple of questions here. Uh, Tim, uh, the first one from Steve and Brian Clay, they all ask similar questions. What are your key major shareholders or any changes for the shareholders in recent months? Sure. Well, most of our shareholders are 60% of them are retail, 20% are high net worth, 10% are institutional. My background really is in the institutional side. So that's something I want to work on and improve. Um, we've got... Uh, uh, we did this, this raise and we're basically gonna get it from the shareholders who help, helped the IPO. We got a very loyal base there. That's again, unusual, I think for a junior to have that kind of access. But as you grow as a company and you move from 100 million to 200 to 300 million, uh, you're gonna to wanna to broaden out your shareholder base. And what we're looking for are people who wanna be with us in the long-term and grow as part of the story. Having both retail, and institutional is really essential for the long-term success of any company. Um, I've, I know for a fact that if you are just institutional, you don't have a lot of liquidity. Uh, we have a lot of liquidity here with our retail support, and um, that's sort of where we're hoping to grow it. Maybe squeeze in one more question here. This one is from Nikki. Is that who asked you what is the potential of Euclid? Because this project has been around uh, for a long time before with East Main. Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, so East Main has basically had this for a while, and there has been disappointment because it really hasn't hasn't become the mine everybody wanted it to be. However, the feedback that I got too is that it was uh, fairly mismanaged and not managed for a growth opportunity. Um, our geologists came in and really reworked all of the mine potential here. We found that they missed things um, in various areas, drilling in opposite ways they should have. And again, I don't think they've even touched the other six targets that could be there. So. I get the question, and I would say is we've got, again, the technical skill set that, that uh, East Main didn't have, and we've got the wherewithal to raise the money from a fabulous shareholder standpoint to get us there. The issue with the mine itself in Eclair is we've got width and we've got grade. We're just trying to coalesce and get them both in the same spot, and it, it is about drilling. And um, But at the same time, we're going to be pursuing other ass opportunities like Percival, which could be really exciting. And um, I will tell you that we've met with some of the larger companies in the industry. They're all watching and uh, hoping that we're gonna have success. So uh, if they're paying attention, I think it's worth you paying attention. Thank you, Tim, for addressing the question. We still have a few more, but we will have uh, running out of time here. So we'll- Great, thank you. And it's nice to meet you, Gilbert. Good luck, everybody.